Hello all. Today we are going to see what is chaos engineering, how to do chaos engineering with litmus chaos, how to use chaos engineering to test resiliency and reliability of a system. Let me first quickly introduce myself. I am Ruturaj Kadikar and I am working as a senior SRE at InfraCloud Technologies. As you can see, these are some of the famous companies and you might be wondering what is common in all these companies. Let me answer that. These companies have faced major outages in the past few years. Now let us look at some statistics around the outages. According to the latest Uptime Institute's outages report, there are, these are the 10 major outages in 2022 and 2023. Going with the latest one, that is Federal Aviation Administration, it faced a major outage due to a configuration issue which caused all the US flights to be grounded. Most of the flights were cancelled or delayed and it incurred a major business loss. domains in your system after exe executing the resiliency test. Reliability. Reliability is getting consistently stable results over the period of time without facing any issues. With reliability, you can achieve higher SLAs and accordingly you can set higher SLOs for your uh, businesses. Another metric for reliability is MTBA mean time between the failures. The higher the MTBA, the higher is the reliability of your system. Now, there might be a question like why to test resilience? We have seen that, okay, there are outages, we have to resolve these outages. But again, one can claim that, okay, I don't face any outage, but then why, why to test the resilience? So to answer to that is, uh, it it may avoid downtimes. So you have not faced downtimes uh, earlier, but there is a possibility always. Testing resiliency provides us with the correct understanding of overall behavior of your system 
when subjected to failures. And by mitigating these failures, we eliminate the system weaknesses, thereby minimizing the unexpected issues in the production. This will increase the mean time between the failures, which will increase the reliability of your system, thereby helping you to achieve the agreed SLA. It will enhance the end user experience. Now sometimes it may occur that your system is working correctly, but some intermediate or intermittent issues may affect the system responses and degrade the user experiences. Lastly, many industries and regulations require that the systems have a certain level of resilience and uptime. You can use this testing to ensure your system meets these requirements and avoids potential legal or regulatory issues. So next, why to test resiliency in Kubernetes? We already know that Kubernetes is operating in high, avail high availability mode. Then specifically going for this test, what is the reason for that? With microservices application hosted on Kubernetes, the underlying architecture may become complex and critical. With lot of inter interconnected services, any minor issues can become a domino effect and may turn into a disaster. It is a distributed system. You know, many people working on different pieces that, that needs to be put all together. There may be uh, several human errors or people sometimes uh, not following the best practices, which may lead to failures. And lastly, the Kubernetes is evolving at a rapid speed. There might be incidences where some APIs are getting deprecated and that go unnoticed, causing failures in your production. Now, since we have talked around what, uh, how to test uh, resiliency, what are failure domains, let's just deep, deep, uh, dig, deep, dig into the failure domains. We have seen earlier that failure domains are the critical areas which can cause major issues in your system. So what are the failure domains in the Kubernetes? First is the network. Some latency, some packet loss or some jitter in the network can cause major outages in your system. So this is the first failure domain. Next is the pod crash crashing. So we know that sometimes the pod crashes abruptly. It is ephemeral in nature. So after life cycle, new pod comes or the pod gets stuck into the crash loop back off. There might be init containers which get stuck into their uh, respective processes and uh, it may cause effect in your overall uh, scalability of your system. The pod may not be able to scale properly. There might be issues with the image registries where the particular image is not able to pull into your uh, Kubernetes from the image repo. There might be issues with the processes like kubelet or container runtime. Sometimes abruptly the kubelet may stop working on a particular node or a container runtime may stop working on a particular node. There might be issues with the nodes like abruptly termination of the nodes, resource saturation on a particular node, uh, resource sa saturation in terms of compute or storage, uh, there, the disk full uh, errors might be there, which may cause issues uh, uh, in your system. Then, uh, there is uh, there is an issue of load patterns. So let's say you need to test your system with bursty load patterns or spiky load patterns so that you need to understand what is the behavior of your system when uh, these load uh, are subjected onto your system. Lastly, uh, we can uh, you know categorize uh, the configuration or human errors like uh, randomly changing the configurations, randomly changing the uh, environment variables, the service dependent de uh, dependencies. Uh, a particular service is not able to resolve that dependency or if one particular service is depending on other another service that may not be reachable so uh, like this we can categorize uh, the failure domains inside kubernetes and accordingly uh, we can create uh, the chaos uh, for uh, the system in the kubernetes now uh, we know that the applications are not just hosted in kubernetes failure domains can be beyond kubernetes and uh, the first category uh, which is there is databases. 
so many uh, companies they host the databases outside of kubernetes uh, in the cloud or on prem so what are the failure domains for these first is network partitioning so there might be uh, issue with uh, your database cluster let's say there are uh, three nodes in your cluster and one particular node uh, is out creating a network partition this may create data inconsistency a split brain scenario uh, it may have a cascading effect on the entire system due to such uh, the node is taken out and you know the recovery of uh, the data is gets very complex it may impact the replication so you need to address these issues uh, whenever uh, any network partitioning incident occurs next is time travel again uh, sort of like uh, connected to the network but with the uh, synchronization issue of the ntp again it will create data in inconsistency it may create security vulnerabilities uh, it may create event synchroni synchronization issues uh, due to uh, incorrect uh, timestamp there might be issues with the log analysis and debugging this in turn will impact the legal and compliance issues you need to check with like latency and packet loss on your databases what is the impact of of that there might be issues with the accesses uh, which can be categorized again as incorrect credentials whether you are uh, you are able to uh, connect with the database with the incorrect credentials are there any authorization bypass what are the uh, effect of expired tokens or expired credentials and there, there can be a lot many uh, in terms of access issues like permissions and all so you need to categorize them as access uh, failure domain there might be again no termination as we have seen it can uh, create network partitioning or the issue may be uh, smaller but again you need to address and you need to see the system behavior accordingly you need to uh, have different types of load patterns on your databases so that uh, the read and write cycles uh, are working properly or not you need to ensure that the next category of failure domains beyond Kubernetes is cloud services. Uh, the one main uh, issue with cloud is uh, instance termination and restarts. And, uh, there might be random or abrupt uh, instant instance terminations and you need to evaluate what is the impact of that. Let's say uh, a new instance is coming up and it takes around one or two minutes. Is your system is able to cope up with this short time span there might be like uh, a huge traffic during that time and this two minute can cause you some business loss around that time next is security group or NACL configuration there might be accidental human errors while configuring security groups and NACL configuration which may cause uh, huge business losses uh, because directly the communication is uh, hampered over there you can check for load balancer uh, load balancers uh, inject high load onto these load balancers check whether they are able to cope up with that uh, in aws scenario you can check whether the target if the targets is healthy and if it is not healthy then what is the impact uh, on your system what is the impact of draining these targets on your system lastly you can simulate a particular AZ downs scenario considering that your application is hosted in a completely HA mode you have let's say multiple uh, your application is uh, spanned into uh, multi multiple AZs availability, availability zones and you take down one particular availability zone and measure the impact on on your system ideally there should not be any impact because your application is is hosted into HA but still there might be some issues and you need to evaluate them beforehand now we have seen like the basics or the context around resiliency and reliability and how chaos engineering plays an important role in testing the resiliency and reliability now let's take a step further into chaos engineering and 
how to do the stuff with chaos engineering. Let's just start with principles of chaos engineering. The first thing is you need to hypothesize about the steady state. On a normal day, on a normal traffic, how your system is responding, it can be considered as a steady state. So once you know that this is your steady state, you need to identify the failure domains. Identify where, what things can go wrong and accordingly create the chaos scenarios and run those experiments in your system. And Find, and then you check or you verify whether your hypothesis and the practical uh, scenario are matching or not. If there are any differences, try to mitigate them and uh, you know uh, in, improve the your system. So you can start with like uh, minimum blast radius first, and you can slowly increase your blast radius. So whenever any unexpected issue comes in, into your production. You can uh, you know uh, you know the what uh, what what are the solution you need to implement and uh, you can minimize the overall blast radius around it. What are the tools available for chaos engineering? Is Litmus Chaos, uh, Gremlin is there, uh, Chaos Monkey, Chaos Mesh. You can also use AWS FIS. Uh, all these uh, tools mainly do the work for you they you, you need to create a chaos you need to inject using them but uh, for this uh, talk and personally why i feel it must chaos is uh, first thing it is open source so you can anybody can use it easily you can use it in a centralized or distributed way so one of the use case which uh, i found very helpful was uh, if there are multiple accounts in your uh, organization and you need to execute chaos from a centralized way so let's say one central account and there are multiple spoke accounts you can do that easily with litmus chaos so litmus chaos has uh, the agents where which you can deploy in different environments and execute the chaos over there next thing it is flexible it can be uh, the scoring around uh, the chaos scenarios or designing the chaos scenarios it is very flexible and easy to use and lastly uh, the other use case which i personally found good was uh, uh, it it has a good integration with aws ssm so what is aws ssm is uh, in aws you can write uh, the scripts around whatever functionality you want to execute you can create a session manager document around that and then you can run that document so litmus can integrate easily with that document and uh, you can uh, induce the chaos in your aws uh, accounts also so whatever we have seen uh, failure domains beyond kubernetes uh, if you have a aws account litmus can be very much uh, uh, litmus uh, can be useful in that scenarios also so let's say we have seen uh, what is chaos engineering, how, wow, how to do chaos engineering and increase the resiliency and reliability of the system. You created the experiments uh, around chaos, you executed them, what now? So <coughs> it is a cycle. Uh, this chaos engineering and resiliency testing is not a one time. Uh, this resiliency testing should be periodic in your organization you can have a resiliency framework as uh, the points we have discussed earlier define a steady state go with the hypothesis execute chaos verify the steady state what is the difference between uh, whatever you have hypothesized and whatever you are getting practical create a reports mitigate those problems again uh, define the steady state with a new uh, vision again create create a hypothesis and create the experiments and in this way you can you know minimize all the outages that are happening in your system by minimizing the unexpected failures in your production secondly you can have a resiliency scoring around like uh, let's say if a pod crash uh, chaos is there the pod uh, can be uh, spawned a new uh, if, if one particular pod pod is terminated 
in that case uh, you can uh, score this chaos uh, with a minimum uh, points and whichever chaos which you are in introducing in your system which may affect uh, or which may have a greater blast radius you can score those uh, experiments accordingly you can have game days wherein uh, you have you can have one particular day uh, where you execute chaos and let other teams to um, resolve those issues so that the system knowledge in your uh, team uh, can be increased you can have period, period periodic resiliency checks and reporting you can have resiliency checks in the cd pipelines let's say you are giving a new release you can have uh, a chaos experiment uh, uh, integrated with your cd pipelines which will test the chaos on your new release and uh, you can see what are the uh, failures or what is the effect uh, of your release beforehand and lastly uh, it will uh, it will improve your observability posture as we have we have seen earlier that uh, you will to gauge you will be able to gauge what is the impact of the chaos and if there is something wrong in your system you can easily find out and quickly find out what is going on now let's see how to run this chaos experiments with litmus chaos in practical so uh, let's just go with the setup i have set up a small eks cluster in aws and uh, i have uh, majorly three namespaces where i have divided all uh, the application the first is the litmus namespace so let's get the pods in litmus namespace as you can see uh, the litmus is deployed in litmus helm uh, litmus namespace and i have used the litmus helm chart to deploy the litmus stack with this helm chart you will deploy the litmus control plane and uh, the litmus agent now this agent is being deployed on the same cluster where the control plane is uh, deployed hence it is called as a self agent whenever you are deploying the agent outside of the the same cluster then it uh, it is called as external agents the next namespace is uh, the prometheus stack as uh, we need to observe whatever the chaos we are doing we need to observe that so let's see pods in prom stack so in this namespace i have uh, deployed the prometheus stack including grafana and for uh, test purpose i have used a microservices demo application that is sock shop so here i have deployed this test microservices application called sock shop so with this uh, this is the uh, bare minimum small setup that i have done for this demo now let's uh, look into how litmus chaos uh, looks so whenever uh, you log into litmus chaos uh, you will see this ui uh, which is called chaos center and here we, you can see uh, chaos scenarios so chaos scenario is nothing but uh, many chaos experiments bind together so it may be uh, one experiment chaos scenario or it may be multiple uh, chaos experiments inside a chaos scenario so if you see this is a chaos scenario and if i say this is one experiment which i have uh, executed inside uh, this one chaos scenario then uh, you can see the delegates as i mentioned earlier since the agent is running in the same uh, cluster as the litmus control plane so it is called a self agent uh, then you have chaos hubs uh, where you have predefined templates of the chaos experiments which you want to execute you can have like aws ssm azure 
you can have for Cassandra uh, pod deletion of core DNS there are some experiments around GCP then there are generic pod delete you can uh, delete uh, this is a template from which you can delete any uh, particular pod or you can kill any container container you can increase the CPU or memory or you can have network network corruption so all these failure uh, domains which we have seen in our uh, 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 previously in this talk we can uh, able to run those failure domains with litmus chaos so this is uh, the chaos hub containing uh, all the pod uh, all the chaos templates then there is a section for analytics litmus uh, provides its own uh, analytics uh, for whatever the chaos scenario you have executed and again we can use statistics i think there is some issue yeah so how many users are there what are the projects how many chaos delegates are there what are the total chaos experiment runs what are the chaos scenarios and when those chaos scenarios are scheduled accordingly you can get all the statistics let's just visit analytics once again so here you can get all the analytics uh, how many times what are the number of runs schedule stats uh, how many experiments failed or uh, what what was the success ratio if you come to a particular statistics of any one particular scenario you can get the statistics over there uh, so for this experiment I had given 10 points and it is passed you can see the resiliency score over here so for each experiment uh, as we have discussed earlier you can give a particular score for pod crashing you can give a smaller score for CPU or memory uh, uh, chaos you can increase the uh, resiliency score and accordingly you can get the statistics around those chaos uh, scenarios or chaos experiments over here and let's see uh, for this demo we will target uh, one creating one chaos scenario uh, from the chaos hub and executing inside the uh, cluster itself and one chaos scenario we will uh, induce in uh, beyond kubernetes that is in the uh, AWS account uh, let's see so whenever you want to schedule a new chaos scenario or execute new chaos scenario you have to uh, click over here uh, schedule chaos scenario then you can go with like whatever the agent let's say if it is a different cluster then there will be an external agent you can select that particular agent and you can uh, proceed further let's say I am uh, we will select a particular experiment from the chaos hub and we will name it as memory hub if you click next you will see uh, that in this scenario you need to add the experiment so we will add the experiment for memory hogging and we will take this particular template that is generic pod memory hog now the good part is from here itself you can tune your, uh, tune your experiment accordingly so where you want to induce the chaos on which particular pod you want to increase the memory let's say I am going uh, with the uh, uh, sock shop namespace and I am taking the deployment uh, let's say catalog okay then you can click on next if you have any uh, health checks or probes you can mention over here uh, then you can uh, tune the uh, memory consumption or the total chaos duration for what for which the memory should be increased currently I am 
for demo purpose i am reducing that and you can reduce it to maybe 30 seconds so if you want to run this uh, experiment uh, pods onto a particular node you can use a node selector over here and you can provide the node selector uh, value key value over here but right now we will not go for that uh, we'll just click finish and we will revert the schedule so whatever uh, the pods are getting scheduled uh, for this uh, chaos scenario in your cluster after the chaos scenario is executed successfully it will clean those particular pods so that's why uh, we click on revert schedule over here and click next so in this step you can give like what points you want to do let's say we uh, give eight points for this experiment and then we click next we want to schedule it now and we'll click on finish so here you can see that the chaos scenario is running we'll say show the chaos scenario and this chaos scenario is in progress so meanwhile let's just uh, see uh, and log into grafana So here I have created, uh, okay, let's see if the dashboard is in place. So we will create a new dashboard You can see uh, the basic uh, memory statistics over here for in this dashboard for the sock shop applications for catalog you can see the CPU usage and memory usage similarly for payment a user and front end whatever uh, we have plotted over here let's just go back to uh, what is the status of our chaos scenario and you can see that uh, first the chaos scenario has run in this it has installed the chaos ex experiments so whenever it installs chaos experiment it is nothing but uh, it will deploy all the custom resources for that particular uh, uh, chaos scenario and uh, then it will execute uh, the the or it will trigger the custom resources in this step now here we have seen this pod memory uh, hog is in progress and we will be able to monitor that uh, in catalog so you can see this memory has increased like a lot so for since it is a demo application we have not increased the memory too much so whatever we are we have uh, induced a chaos we are able to observe that so first thing is you need to uh, create all the observability solutions or you should have all the observability solution in place so practically if you want to map it let's say if the memory is increased i should have an alert okay for this particular pod uh, my memory is increased so with chaos you need to identify the gaps in your observability also you can see the chaos uh, scenario is success uh, it has reverted all the uh, chaos uh, pods also. So let's just say 
Twitch uh, CPM. You won't be able to see any new pod over here. So all the pods or all the custom resources which were created for the, that experiment are uh, first completely. And you can see the memory has increased over here. Let's just take a look around uh, the next scenario. That is, uh, the scenario is such that I have created a test uh, instance uh, in AWS and I am able to ping that instance. Now, with our experiment, we will change the security group and uh, uh, this ping should not be successful so idea behind this is whenever uh, you can you know change the configurations and check what is the impact check whether you have alerts uh, or observability in place if somebody changes the security group by mistake are you able to uh, or is it noticeable to you uh, quickly so that you can uh, minimize the uh, downtime around uh, which has caused due to that security uh, group change. So with this uh, example, uh, let's just start with uh, our experiment. For this, we will use a different approach. Uh, what I have done is I have taken the template of uh, AWS SSM and I have modified that. So let's just see how we can use that. So whenever you Again, we are scheduling a new chaos scenario with new experiment. I think this is a bit slow. So this time we will uh, import a chaos YAML. So I have created a YAML. Uh, the workflow is into uh, the YAML and which we will be applying over here. So whenever this kind of uh, experiments you have to induce in AWS. There are majorly uh, two steps. As we have seen that for AWS, uh, uh, whatever you want to execute the chaos in AWS, you have to go through, uh, you have to write SSM documents. So what is SSM documents is nothing but let's say you go in systems manager and you write the script, whatever you want to do in the cloud you write a script for that in terms of documents so if you click on documents over here it will uh, uh, you know there are predefined documents given by AWS whatever you want to do you can refer those and you can uh, create your own documents and we create our own document and then that document so let's say if this is my document right test chaos uh, through SSM which we uh, through which we will change our uh, security group configuration so for this demo we are keeping it basic minimalistic design and you can see that i'm just revoking one ingress rule uh, in the security group so this is how aws document uh, looks like what we will do is we will uh, put this aws document inside a config map and pass it to the litmus so how it is done is you can see i have created a revoke security group config map and this is just a config map and in the data section i have just uh, pasted uh, my ssm document over here and then i have applied this uh, config map with kubectl apply command next once your config map is in place we have to design a workflow so with uh, the template which was there uh, i have utilized the same template and i modified a bit so as you can see this is the workflow and this scenario has three steps as we have seen earlier it will uh, install the experiment then our main ex uh, experiment will be executed and then the chaos will be reverted these are the three steps in this workflow what changes you have to do is uh, if you see the workflow has all the custom resource creation here you can see uh, 
the resources which are created over here chaos engine chaos experiments uh, what is the chaos result so from this resource uh, it will showcase into the ui what was the result and all and here is uh, the chaos engine i have passed my config map over here uh, you can see litmus revoke uh, security group and i mounted uh, uh, this config map uh, in this workflow second change what i have done is uh, i have taken the document path i have given uh, litmus revoke sg what was the document name and the path for that i have specified the path i have specified the instance uh, let's just uh, revisit the instance one, once again so that uh, we are sure that whatever instance we have taken it is correct so let's just copy this instance id and paste it over here so that uh, for running that particular uh, SSM document it will take this particular instance ID and then in the last step you can see it is deleting the chaos engine uh, from the litmus uh, namespace so the revert uh, chaos scenario is in the third step so we will take this chaos scenario and we will uh, upload it uh, into the chaos center so we'll just select our workflow okay and then if i click next and uh, i rename rename it as revoke sg mate and i'll be scheduling it now you can see uh, the code is fine if there are any issues with the yaml it will uh, uh, showcase over here that there is a issue with the linting or something and let's just uh, click on finish if you go to the chaos scenario you can click on show the chaos scenario and we you can see that it is in progress now it is installing the chaos experiments you can see over here that the new pods are getting created for that particular chaos experiment you can see there is a new pod revoke sg new and if i get some chaos engine you can see the chaos engine running over here So it is showing AWS SSM Chaos by ID because we have used that particular template over here. Let's just see the experiment is in progress. Now we can see that let's just say see whether it is in action or not. So behind the scene it is executing this AWS SSM document and whatever whenever AWS SSM document is uh, getting executed it uses the run command we have seen over uh, clicked over here in the run command and you can see either in the command or in the command history so this is uh, revoke sg command as of now and we can see that it is success uh, you can check the output for this is it has written true and we can verify 
we can verify it by checking the security group you can go to the security group and check it let me go to the uh, instance first So you can see there is no security group that will allow ICMP packages and now let's just check whether we are able to ping or not. So you can see that we are not able to uh, ping. So whatever the rule was there it was removed and this is the impact that there is no connectivity as of now. So this is how you can uh, execute any uh, scenario in your AWS, maybe instance deletion, maybe whatever we have discussed, like uh, if your databases are hosted in AWS, you can execute, you can write a, a SSM document, you can uh, put it in uh, config map and uh, using litmus, uh, you can uh, execute that particular uh, chaos. So coming back to our analytics, if you see again, if there will be so these are the pods that it is completed. You can see the chaos result. This is the latest one. So it is awaiting the result. So in this way, you can execute any chaos uh, inside uh, AWS account using AWS uh, SSM document and Litmus. So that's all uh, for this talk. Uh, we have seen. Uh, what is chaos, what is resiliency and how to increase uh, reliability of your system using chaos engineering and resiliency testing. We have seen litmus chaos, uh, well, why it was you know, uh, use, uh, useful for our use case is uh, firstly because it was open source, it was uh, flexible, it had centralized uh, approach for executing chaos into multiple accounts and mainly it has the integration for uh, AWS system uh, documents through which we executed chaos uh, inside Kubernetes and outside of Kubernetes in AWS. So that's it. Uh, thank you.